I grew up about 45 minutes northwest of College Park in a town called Damascus, Maryland. I started playing football for their youth organization when I was seven years old and then just grew throughout that youth organization and onto Damascus High School. Being a DMV guy, obviously the legend of Jake Funk is something that I'd heard about for years and years. Junior year, had a great year, felt like I had a breakout year. My team ultimately went to the state championship that year and lost. And then my senior year, I had a record-breaking year. I scored 57 touchdowns in a single season, seven of those which came in a state championship game where we ultimately won. I was named Gatorade Player of the Year um, for the state of Maryland that year, along with a lot of other accolades. He left as one of the all-time leading rushers, the all-time leading touchdown makers, and having recruited this area for 30 years. A lot of great players that have come out of this state of Maryland, for him to be at the top of the record books as a running back, I think it speaks the uh, volumes for the type of player he is and how he's respected. I had one Power Five offer, and that was from Wisconsin, and they wanted me to play linebacker. And ultimately, Wisconsin pulled their offer. So from there, I was um, pretty lost in terms of recruiting. 2015, I took over as the interim for Coach Etzel, and I can remember one of my first orders of business was I sent one of our assistants up to uh, Damascus High School to see Jake Funk and offering him an opportunity to come to Maryland. This guy is what a Terp is all about. He embodies the DMV uh, DNA, as we like to say, and, and that a guy that loves this area, is from here, um, and has really done a great job representing Maryland high school football. Later that week, I committed to Maryland. It was something that seemed very surreal at the time. To this day, I still have every single article that was ever written about me that says I was a fullback, too slow, too small. It's just another thing that drives you. There are very, very few people that truly understand what it's been like for me the last two years. I come into this building every day with a very positive attitude and really try to you know, brighten other people's day with my positivity. Um, but a lot of people have not seen the side of me where I'm sitting in a hospital bed crying, wondering whether or not my football career is gonna be over. 2018, Ohio State week, I vividly remember running down on a kickoff and my knee just buckling on me. Didn't really have a lot of pain, jogged off the field, you know, thinking to myself that like my knee just didn't feel right. Ultimately got an MRI after that game, found out I tore my ACL, very devastated. Growing up, I literally can't remember a single injury. He's a guy that never missed a practice, never missed a game. They went right into rehab mode with the first year. <laughs> went into the 2019 season, um, had a great first two games. Turns it off to Funk again, getting funky with it. Touchdown! Really felt like I was hitting stride. And then got into the third game against Temple ran down on a kickoff again, and my knee necess didn't necessarily buckle, um, but I just felt like a little pop, and I was like, all right, that was weird. Um, again, not painful, jogged off the field. Ultimately, got an MRI. Again, I tore my ACL. It really broke me down mentally. The amount of work that you put in um, the first year um, you were like, how could this happen again? I never really had any doubt in my ability to come back. Um, I came back once, I could do it again. So ultimately, went through the rehab process again, tweaked a couple things that we, uh, we did the first time. 
but I really wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my older brother, Josh. He started his own business, Rehab to Perform, which is a local uh, physical therapy company in this area. When quarantine ultimately hit, I wasn't able to train with the med staff here, so he kind of took over as my physical therapist. Probably spent the most time with him uh, kind of going through not just the, the physical side of rehab, but some of the psychological and mental side of the rehabilitation process as well. To be able to be here as an older brother, to have walked this path with him over the past few years. Keep going. It was tremendously gratifying for me to just to be a part of it and see uh, the smile on his face. Felt like a whole different person after that. I came in, went into training camp, and ultimately, Coach Locks put it out there that I was the guy, I was the running back. It was just a very proud moment for me. I knew he put the work in. He's earned the right to be the leader with the way he works and with his perseverance and how he's overcome every obstacle he's ever faced. Tonga Vailoa to Funk, seeking the end zone. That Minnesota game was particularly emotional for us. I can remember getting a phone call from him where he was still on the field after the game and just the amount of gratitude, uh, and we shared what I would say would be a more emotional moment between the two of us. Second down, Funk. He is in! My knee feels great, and I'm finally having fun playing football again.